So when should you use plugins and when is it best to stay away? That's what we're talking about in today's video podcast. Hey there, and welcome to the Motion Science video podcast. My name is Cameron, and today we're talking about plugins and more specifically, When should you use them and when should you stay away from them? So let's talk about the first, when to stay away from plugins, because the reason I'm addressing this is I get asked a lot of what plugins should I use? Um, Is this plugin better than this plugin? I see a lot of motion designers really focused on plugins. And that's kind of a dangerous thing. When we don't understand as a motion designer, what it takes to build amazing motion design without the plugins, that's when we put out work that isn't so awesome, okay? So when should you not use plugins? Uh, You should not use plugins when you're going for the cool factor, okay? If you're just saying like, I'm gonna add this plugin, it's gonna make my work look amazing, it's gonna look so cool, stay away from the plugins, right? That's, That's a bad sign. You should also not use a plugin because it's trendy. I see this all the time. A company will put out an advertisement like, hey, here's a new plugin. You've got to check this out. And all of a sudden, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Okay. It can be a globe plugin. That's everywhere. It can be a chromatic aberration plugin. It's everywhere. It can be a particle system. It's everywhere. And all of a sudden, because it's so trendy, because it's the new hot plugin, all the work that I see on the socials starts to look the same. So don't use a plugin because it's trendy. Now there's nothing wrong with just jumping in and diving in and kind of exploring that plugin because, you know, when a plugin comes out or a script even, um, they're made for a specific purpose. And that purpose could be uh, to save us time and energy, right? Which is a big thing with motion design. Motion design for really good motion design takes a lot of time. Yes, it takes a lot of time. Like I get asked that a lot too. Like, is it gonna take me a long time to make this? Yes, if you want it to look awesome, it's typically gonna take some time to make it. And people are often surprised, especially in new motion designers, how long it takes to make good motion design. But if a plugin comes along and it can help you know, speed that process up, I'm all for it. But don't do it just because it's trendy and everyone else is doing it. Uh, a third reason is not to use a plugin is thinking it's going to make your work look better. And this kind of comes back to the cool factor, which was number one. Um, to have really awesome motion design, to, to, to have your work look like other designers out there that you admire, you have to start at the bottom, right? You have to, not, not saying that you have to start at the bottom of the ranks, you have to start at the base of what makes good motion design, right? Now, if you want to learn how to do that, go check out Stylecraft. I show you what the elements and the principles of good design and animation are that will make your work stellar, right? Uh, It will uplevel you. Also check out ProFlows. There's techniques in there. Now it does focus more on how, how do you do something, but there's also a lot of why in there for why it looks better. And that's what you have to understand, right? You gotta understand what makes good motion design. That, That, that's a lot of different things. But if your work isn't solid at that base level, then when you put a plug in on it to make it look cool, it's not gonna look cool. I'm sorry to say, you know, like uh, for me personally, I love glow plugins, right? And I was just bashing on some glow plugins, but I do love glow. I love it. I've, I've used it for years, years and years and years. And it looks cool. But if my base motion design doesn't look cool to begin with, then adding that polish, that glow on the top, it's just going to make it, you know, what do they say? Shine a turd. Shine a turd. Is that what they say? I don't know. What, I'm terrible with sayings. But uh, same goes for like right now for chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is everywhere, uh, at least in the pro world. I see it everywhere. Sometimes it's very, very subtle. Sometimes it's really over the top too much. And typically the times that it's over the top, this is a great example. It's over the top because a motion designer thinks, hey, everyone's using chromatic aberration. It's trendy. It's cool. I'm going to apply it to my work and it's going to make it look that much better. And you can tell that that's the case because the chromatic aberration is in your face, right? It's just too much. It's not, it should be subtle. Same goes for glitching. 
Uh, I see it all the time with um, motion designers just throwing on glitch on a random project. And I'm not here to diss on you. We're here to learn. But you're not going to take a piece like a, you know, just like I've seen corporate pieces where all of a sudden you're watching a corporate video and there's a glitch transition to the next shot. And it's like, well, hold on. Like, why was there a glitch there? Like, it doesn't make, it makes absolutely zero sense. But glitching was so trendy everyone's using glitch effects, right? And that's not the reason to use a plugin, not the reason. So let's talk about now when you should use plugins, okay? Um, a great use of a plugin is when you have a specific set of tasks that you need to accomplish, like um, I mentioned earlier, particles, okay? If you have a particle system, <clears throat> excuse me, your work, you've been hired to, to create um, a piece around particles, or you want to create a spec piece around particle systems. Well, then of course you want to use uh, a particle plugin. Like now there are built-in plugins inside of After Effects that create particles, like particle systems, particle world. Um, I'll be honest, I've never dove very deep into those because there are particle generators like from Red Giant, uh, Trap Code Particular. I've been using Particular since the beginning. Whenever I need to use a particle system, that's where I go, right? Because I know that plugin and it's there for a specific purpose. I'm not going to use it for things like magic dust and things like that. Um, I don't get hired to do those type of projects. There's nothing wrong with using it for that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, there's, there's so many cases of using particle systems for a specific project, right? Um, the same can go for like physics based. Like there's plugins like Newton, right? And Newton is there as a plugin to make your workflow faster when you have to have things like bouncing or falling um, and reacting to, to real world physics. Well, that's when a plugin like Newton is ideal to use, okay? Because it has a very specific task. It's going to speed up your workflow to do that. And you've been hired to, to do this physics-based motion design piece. Um, another specific example is like when I, I love neon. Right. And I've been teaching neon uh, in ProFlows. And in ProFlows, um, almost all my lessons were based around a plugin called Saber from Video Copilot. And the reason I love Saber so much is because number one, it's a free plugin from Video Copilot. And anything they put out is amazing, as we all know. And it does such a stellar job of creating neon looks that it's like, why wouldn't I go to that immediately? Because I know that I can create some, some mass or some typography and throw this plugin on there. And it's going to immediately, with a few adjustments, look like neon, right? It saves me so much time. I use it specifically for neon. Every time I create neon, I'm using Saber. Do I use it for anything else? No. But I know for, for neon effects, I'm going to jump into that. And, you know, neon's really hot right now at the time of this recording. Anyways, it's really very popular. And it's a, it's a powerful plugin. I'm also going to use plugins for what I call the polish. Okay. Uh, again, I talk a lot about the polish and style craft. The polish is the last 10, 15, 20% of a project that already looks stellar. It looks so good. And you have this project that looks so great. And your client sees it and says, wow, that's amazing. Now you apply this last 10, 15, 20%, the polish, that's your plugins. That's when you're applying your subtle glows and your subtle chromatic aberrations, um, your subtle like dusts or grains, things like that, that just add that little extra oomph to that piece to push it over the edge and just to make it an amazing piece. Okay. That's the polish. That's for me, that's actually the number one reason to use plugins. It's at the very end, you, you really create that final look based on the polish. Now, I love certain plugins that can do that. Uh, for me, like um, Sapphire, that's my suite of plugins that is by far the be all end all. If I could only use one set of plugins, it would be Sapphire, right? And they have a lot of plugins built into it, but that they create the final polish. Um, another reason to when to use plugins is when you're creating, 
trying to create a specific look at the end, okay? So again, this is you building up a piece, 80% there, 90% there. And you need to finish it out with that final look. And maybe that look is like, for me, I love like old film looks, right? And, or a grungy look. And, and there are certain plugins I know uh, specifically that, that can create that old film look without me having to go, I could go into After Effects and I could create a stack of adjustment layers and I could create, you know, scratches and grains and dust and flicker and exposure and um, film jitters, things like that, layer after layer after layer. Or I could save myself an entire day or four hours or five hours by just applying my favorite film look plugins at the end. Now, when I apply those for that specific look, I rarely ever apply the plugin and say, hey, it's good to go. There's the preset, it's good to go. I rarely, rarely, rarely ever do that. It's always best to take that initial preset and I dive into it and I just I fine tune it for my work. What, what needs to be adjusted? What needs to be cranked up or cranked down for my piece that it's applied to, okay? And my last reason, reason number five for when to use a plugin is if it's a specific time-saving plugin, like one of my favorites, Animation Composer. Okay. If you're not familiar with Animation Composer, go check it out. It's by MrHorse.tv. Um, it is such a time saver when I want to do simple animations and I want to try things out. And this is just one specific plugin that I'm talking about. There's a lot of these plugins out there that save you time, but plugins that specifically are made to save you time. What I love about the Animation Composer, Animation Composer is that I can go through hundreds of presets and just click click two clicks and they're applied to my typography animation, to my camera animation, to my, my uh, shape animation, whatever it is. And I can immediately see what things are going to look like with two clicks versus typing in a lot of expressions or manipulating keyframes. Yes. I, I get, I get, I get like uh, pushbacks on this saying, well, it's just a pre-made preset. No, you never take a preset and just leave it as is. I like to take presets. I like to combine presets. I like to uh, fine tune those, those parameters of that preset. But these, these plugins that are made to save you time and energy, we're always trying to save energy. Our brains are wired for us to always save energy, right? And so, and that's a scientific fact. I'm not just making this up. So, we want to save time and that's when those plugins, that's when they come in. And they're like I said, there's a lot of them out there, but those are the ones, those are the times you, you should use plugins. So just to recap, don't use a fact, don't use a plugin for a cool factor because it's trendy or because you think it's going to make your work look better. It probably won't. Don't use plugins for that. When do you use a plugin? If you have a specific set of tasks you're trying to accomplish, a specific like particle systems or, or physics, if or you um, have a plugin that has a, a very specific um, look, like a neon look, like Saber, right? Or use it for polish, which is the last 10, 15, 20% of your, of your project. You've already got the base there, you're applying the polish. Use it for a specific look at the end, like glows and chromatic aberrations or film looks, whatever it is. And use it for a specific as a time saver, something, a plugin that can save you time. Time is money. And when we're getting paid by a client, if we can save ourselves some time and speed up the process, we're all winners, right? So there you go. That's when you should use plugins and when you should stay away from them. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I'm Cameron and this is Motion Science. See ya.